Howdy friends! Today I'm going to go over how I built my mushroom fruiting tent and why I chose this setup. Timestamps, as well as all of the products used in the video, can be found below in the description. I've been waiting to make this video for some time now because I wanted to make sure I got it right. The tent itself is incredibly simple. It's really just a stackable storage rack with a plastic cover. The only modifications I made to it were adding a double layer of trash bags to the bottom to keep the humidity trapped, and I also added a hole for the fogger, as well as some holes that I stuffed with polyfill so the air and moisture being pumped in will have somewhere to go. Originally I had been using a reptile fogger to add humidity to the tent, but I ran into some major issues with that. The first being, the size of the reservoir is small and required filling often. The second was that by using tap water, which was not recommended by the manufacturer, the unit became a vector for contamination and soiled my tent. The third was that I needed another system to either pull air out or pump fresh air in because the fog would quickly condense and pool at the bottom of the tent, creating a whole host of issues. I knew something needed to be done before making this video. So when I heard Mossy Creek Mushrooms mention in a video that he is committed to the House of Hydro and their mist makers, I knew it was the change worth making. John, the owner of the House of Hydro, sponsored the components for today's video, and I couldn't be happier with his products and customer service. Honestly, I will be returning to his shop out of my own pocket in the future because I trust him and I love his products. The components you'll need to complete today's build are First and most importantly, the disc mist maker that comes with a float to keep it at the ideal depth in your tub and provide ample humidity when needed. For this size tent, John recommended a single disc unit which comes with three disc replacements and converts 0.13 gallons of water to mist per hour. So if it was running 24 hours a day, it would go through roughly three gallons of water. But from what I've noticed, it only runs 12 hours a day and that's with leaving the fan on all day as well. This leads me into the fan. You can use any fan you want for your tub. Really, its only jobs are to push the mist made by the mist maker, as well as fresh air into your tent. The reason why I went with the House of Hydro is because their waterproof fan kit comes with an adjustable speed for the fan. It's waterproof, so I don't have to worry about burning anything down, and I can plug directly into my 120 volt outlet. The next component is the Humidistat humidity controller. This allows you to input what level of relative humidity you want the mist maker to cut on, and it also tells it when to cut off. The final piece that sold me on this design is the Aquarium UV Sterilizer Light. This ensures that my large tote of water isn't fostering contaminants to send into the tent. You'll also need a tote. I chose a 27 gallon black and yellow tote from my local home improvement store, but you can use whatever size you want. You can even get a second one and add a float valve for extended absences away from your tent but that's another video. You will also need a duct to connect your tub to your tent. You can find a duct adapter on the House of Hydro as well. So let's run through how I built it. I began by using a four inch hole saw to drill two identical holes on the lid of the tote. I went ahead and traced the duct adapter's corners twice because its holes are located the same distance apart as the fans. I then drilled two holes at each corner so I can secure the fan and duct adapter with zip ties to the tote. I then repeated the same process for the duct adapter. I then cut a hole in the tent, inserted the duct, and taped it in place. You could easily add another hole and duct to your tote to connect it to another tent. Don't worry, the hard part is over. The UV aquarium light is super easy to install. It comes with two suction cups and an adapter to connect them to the light. It's worth mentioning that you want to handle this step with care. You want the clips to attach directly to the bulb, not the ends of the light. Once you've attached the suction cups to the light, it's time to add it to your tote. These suction cups work really well. I don't believe it matters whether you submerge the light in the water or just leave it above since it's waterproof. However, I've heard it's more effective at sterilizing the water while being submerged, but word of caution, don't look at this thing when it's on if you value your eyesight. Next, we add our mist maker disc to the housing float. This ensures the mist maker is kept at an ideal depth in the water. I found the middle of the tub is a good place for me to keep it. 
You can cut holes for the wires or just run them over the side of the tote like I did. It's not a perfect seal, but it works just fine. The only way to get a really good seal on these totes is to add a sealant to the litter tote. I've read this can be done by adding the same RTV we use for jar lids to create a seal where the lid comes into contact with the tote. Next, I place the humidistat diode in the tent and connect it to the mist maker unit. You want your diode to be hanging as opposed to laying flat to prevent moisture from building up and interfering with the sensor. A nice thing about this humidistat is that you can easily replace the diode at the end of its life rather than having to replace the entire unit. Currently, I have the humidistat set to turn off at 94% relative humidity, to cut on when it reaches 85% relative humidity, and I just let the fan run constantly at a low speed so fresh air is constantly being introduced. This may change in the future, but for now it works great for me. I've tried to keep this as short as possible while covering everything I wanted to, so I hope it's helped you in some way. If it did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to see more related content. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Much love and God bless.